Hello, welcome to worship at Baptist Church of the Covenant. Thank you for joining us today. I have a few announcements for our community. Today at 1030, there is a Zoom for Covenant 101. This is a class that we offer periodically for folks who are visiting with us, who want to know more about our congregation. So look for that information about how to join in through your crossroads. Also, let me remind you that in the crossroads, you find links to two surveys that are being circulated and that need your response. One of those is the annual interest survey, which helps us populate committees and find leaders and teachers for all kinds of things in our church. It's a great way to become involved in something that interests you. So complete the survey because that deadline is Wednesday, October 14th. Also, there's a survey about long range planning, a visioning for our facility and property and all kinds of things that we would like to see happen here. Please complete that survey as well because you are helping a great committee of folks who is thinking about all of these things for us right now. Finally, on Friday, you should have received an email from our pastor search committee announcing the pastor nominee and also a schedule of activities for the coming week. I hope you've received that and if you haven't, please contact the church office and let us know. The pastor nominee will preach for us in worship next Sunday, October 18th and immediately following the pastor search committee will bring its report to us in a called business meeting at 10 a.m. So be ready for that on October 18th. We're excited about these things that are going on in our community, but we're just so happy to be together in spirit for worship on this day. Join me as we link our hearts through Christ in a bond of love for worship as it continues with us and through us this morning.
Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. For the Lord is good. The Lord's love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare the Lord's praise? Blessed are they who maintain justice, who constantly do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to my aid when you save them. That I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may share in the joy of your nation and join your inheritance in giving praise. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to be in your presence again today. Thank you for the blessings you have showered upon us. We rejoice in your compassion as we proceed through this season of difficulty and change. As a church community, and as a larger national community, we are weary of being apart, but continue to have faith in your love for us and for the world. We ask you to provide us with strength to continue in faith as we move into a season likely to cause even more anxiety, fear, and rancor. Help us to remember your commandment to love those around us, even when we disagree on so many things. We beg that you place in our minds those things we need to remain strong in our faith and ask you to provide us the strength to do those things we need to do to bring our world closer to you. And we ask that you provide us your peace, which surpasses our understanding. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Hi everybody, today we're gonna to talk about a parable, a story that Jesus told um, about a king that had a huge feast, a big party uh, for a wedding. And it's Matthew 22 verses one through 14. It's a story that Jesus told about a king who had a big party. Uh, so first of all, think about how like today, if you had a birthday party, you would have a list of people that you would want to invite to your birthday party, like your friends, uh, your family, um, maybe some people from church, who knows. Uh, so just like how for one of your birthday parties, you would have people that you invite, uh, this king had a big list of people that he wanted to come to his wedding party. Uh, and he sent all of his people out to go ask them to come, but nobody wanted to come. Uh, and he got, the king got really mad. Um, so he still was going to have his party, but what he did was he went out into the street and let everybody come. He said, I don't care if you're good, if you're bad, uh, I don't care who you are, come to my party and we're going to eat a lot of food and we're going to have a really good time. Um, so that he did that and a whole bunch of people came. So what Jesus is trying to say in this part of the story is uh, it's like church is like this feast that God is inviting everybody to. It doesn't matter if you're good or if you're bad or if you've done bad things in the past or if you're a great person, it doesn't matter. He wants you to come to the feast and be happy and eat food and partake in the wedding and stuff like that. Um, but it's up to, just like how in this story, the first people that the king invited didn't wanna come. Uh, so they missed out on the food and they missed out on the fun stuff. Um, but then the people that came that, uh, he went out into the street and invited, uh, they did come. So they, they got to eat and, uh, or they got to eat all the really good food that the King was serving and stuff like that. Uh, but verses 11, 12, and 13 of this story are a little bit weird. I'm going to read them. Uh, it's when the king went in to meet the guest, he found that one of them wasn't wearing the right kind of clothes for the wedding. The, the king asked, friend, why didn't you wear proper clothes for the wedding? But the guest had no excuse. So the king gave orders for that person to be thrown out of the party. Now, this, count, this sounds kind of sounds kind of weird because you wouldn't have like a dress code for a birthday party that you would have today. But back when Jesus was around um, in Jesus's time for weddings and stuff like this, uh, the king would um, give people clothes to wear when they came into the party. So everybody would wear the same thing. But then this one person uh, decided not to wear his clothes. Uh, it's not that he didn't have the clothes. The king would have given them uh, the, the king would have given that person the clothes when he came into the party, but uh, he decided not to wear them. So the king threw him out. Now, if we're talking about how this party is like church, um, God wants you to come to the party, to come to church, but the point is not to come to the party just so that you can have good food which is what this guy was doing. He just wanted to eat the good food and not do what he was supposed to do. Um, but God wants you to come to church and have all of that good food and have all of your, uh, your good times and stuff like that. But you also have to be a part of the church. And uh, how you do that is uh, spreading kindness, um, finding the beauty and people and nature and uh, different things, being gracious. And uh, so, yeah, uh, you have to respect and love other people so that you can stay in the party. That's like how the king gave, was giving the people clothes to wear, but the guy didn't choose, the guy chose not to wear the clothes. So it would be like if you came to church and chose to be mean to all, all the other people because God wants you to be kind and love everyone. So uh, this week, what I want you to try and do is remember that God always wants you at his party. Uh, you're always invited. You're never uninvited. Uh, and you can't do anything to become uninvited from God's party. But 
the thing is to come to the party uh you need to uh respect others and love each other and um so wherever you go this week uh because we're not coming to church uh look for god's beautiful blessings and people's smiles uh like in the sky and uh in nature and the leaves changing colors uh and you'll see that god is all around he's everywhere uh you just have to look for him and sharing love and kindness uh is a way that we bring god's party to other people so that they can come too uh so because maybe not everybody knows about the party so to share uh to spread love and to spread kindness is how you invite other people to the party too uh so let's wrap it up with the prayer and keep that message with you this week and spread kindness and spread love we're gonna pray dear god thank you for loving us thank you for loving all of us the same thank you for inviting us to be your children help us show your love wherever we are amen Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with Euodia and I plead with Syntyche to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the Lord God of peace will be with you.
let us pray together. O oh God of love and joy, of hope and healing, God of gentleness and peace, and God who companions us along the way. Sometimes it's hard to find you nowadays. It's certainly hard to rejoice. We are overwhelmed by the weirdness in the world. We are tossed to and fro by the news cycle. We have trouble making decisions because so much is unsure right now. It's hard to sleep because we're wondering what new and odd thing will happen while we're resting. Hmm. That reminds us though, God, that while we rest, you are always awake. Your eyes go to and fro on this earth. You are watching out for us and you are watching out for others. Help us know, God, that you watch out for us and that part of the ways you watch out for others are through us. Hear us, God, as we pray today. Guide us. Hear us as we pray for our nation. As we pray for our elected officials. As we pray for our doctors and nurses and for our researchers. As we pray for our teachers and our school employees and our students. As we pray for our neighbors. As we pray for our family. As we pray for our church. As we pray for those who are ill. As we pray for those who are grieving. Give us understanding, O Lord of hope. Fill us with your peace. Enough peace that we can share with others. Hear our prayers, O God, as we pray the way you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Good morning, Baptist Church of the Covenant family and friends. Let us pray. All wise and lovely God, we praise and bless thy holy and majestic name. We ask, O Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, my liberator, my comforter, my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our sermon theme today is Praiseworthy Living. You never know what good writings and learnings can come from jail and where praiseworthy living has its origin. Dr. King was jailed in this town and wrote his famous letter from a Birmingham jail to church leaders that were silent on issues of justice. Nelson Mandela was arrested and imprisoned in 1962 and spent 27 years in three different prisons, including Robben Island, but later became president of the Republic of South Africa. Muhammad Ali was jailed for refusing to be drafted into military service, saying, the Vietnamese have never done anything to me, and later held the heavyweight boxing championship belt for many, many years. You remember Paul and Silas over in the book of Acts they were arrested in Philippi, flogged and jailed for causing a public disturbance. And at about midnight, the scripture says, Paul and Silas were praying and sang praises unto God. Other prisoners heard them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and all the doors were opened and everyone was free. You never know. What kinds of words of wisdom and actions happen from a jail cell? It seems God is reminding us that one may be locked up, but they can still be free in God to carry out God's plan, God's promise, and God's provision for the people of God. In our scripture this morning, Paul is pleading with Eudoia and Syntach, two women leaders who seem to be not agreeable in the Lord, according to Paul. We do not know anything specifically about this disagreement, but know from a jail cell that this is important to Paul, who writes this letter to the church at Philippi. We do know that they were valued missionaries who shared in Paul's struggles and show us that they had leadership roles in the church. Paul cared enough to write to them because he understood the power of relationships and how we have to do things together in the church and how they must be named and attended to for the good of the whole. Issues in church that are not addressed have a way of becoming unhealthy, not only for individuals, but for the church system, which will not yield a healthy outcome of the conflict. Paul seeks to address it and ask other leaders in the faith to help the women with the issue before them. After he addresses the issues with the women, he adds some ingredients for praiseworthy living and says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Let your gentleness be evident to all, for the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. How can these words, church, come from a guy in prison? How can this energy of positivity come from a guy surrounded by iron curtains? It seems strange, but Paul's attitude can teach us an important lesson. Our inner attitude does not have to reflect our outward circumstances. Let me say that again. Our inner attitude do not have to reflect our outward circumstances. That's what we hear in the song by Johnny Nash, who passed recently when he sang the song, I can see clearly now the rain has gone. I can see all the obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. I think I can make it now. The pain is gone. 
All of the bad feelings have disappeared. Here is that rainbow I've been praying for. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. The song is about hope and courage for people who have experienced adversity in their lives, but later have overcome it. Paul was full of joy because no matter what would happen to him, he knew that Christ was with him. As we continue in this pandemic, we know it has changed our whole living experience with mask wearing, social distancing, washing hands, changed work schedules, how we go to the grocery store, the doctor, and other important responsibilities. And yet, we do not know when this new way of living will end. For our children, some are in school schedules that, and some are online. College and universities are playing out in the same classroom status until someone is positive and they go online again. We do not know when it will end, but Paul reminds us that through it all, we are called to rejoice in the Lord. When we rejoice in the Lord, we are reminded of who we are and whose we are. We are children of the Most High God who loves us, cares for us, provides for us, feeds us, protects us, reprimands us, and wants the world to know what a relationship with the mighty God can be like through Jesus the Christ. That is something to rejoice in, church, about even in the midst of this pandemic, even in the midst of pastoral transitions, even in the midst of children's school schedules, even in the midst of a hotly contested senatorial election in our state. And 26 days, 15 hours, and 34 minutes till the presidential election in November, we still have something to rejoice about. Not only did Paul remind them to rejoice, but also encourage them not to be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Church, can you imagine not being anxious about anything? With all that is going on, that is a huge challenge. But Paul not only urged the people in Philippi, but perhaps us as well to turn our worries into prayers. Turn them into petitions to the Most High God and let God respond to our words we offer up to our Creator. Why worry when we have a God who can handle our worries and our anxiousness? Whatever you are anxious about today, let's turn it over to God in prayer. If Corona is keeping you up at night, pray. If your kids are away in college and you are afraid they may test positive, pray. If you are concerned about all the ads and days before the elections, pray. If you are continuing to find restlessness with this new way of living, pray. Whatever is worrying you, Paul is reminding us to pray as a part of our praiseworthy living. Paul says, finally, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. Think about such things. Paul reminds us in these closing scriptures, our minds determines what comes out in our words and actions. Paul wants us to program our minds with thoughts that are true, noble, right, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. When we read God's word and surround ourselves with like-minded followers of the faith, we replicate the togetherness that Paul wanted for the two women in the beginning of the scripture. In other words, we can help each other in praiseworthy living. May it be so today, forever, and always. Amen.
pray with me. God of grace and God of glory, we praise you for who you are. We come today to thank you for the love and mercy you show us each day. We thank you as we as a congregation prepare for a new pastor. Thank you for each member of the search committee who has brought us our nominee. We know many hours of prayer have led to this nominee. Thank you for her and her family. As a congregation, we will soon vote on whether or not to extend the call. May we all pray and continue to pray for your guidance in this vote. The committee believes this is a person and pastor to walk with us into the next 50 years at BCOC. We believe she will serve beside us and pastor us through. Help us all to do our part as the body of Christ in this place. During these crazy times, we sometimes get discouraged, lonely, and wonder, when will it all end? Help us to lean on you and others for strength and encouragement. Help us to be your eyes, hands, and voice to others we are around each day, to send a note or make a phone call. We thank you for this church and what it means to everyone here. Help us through this pandemic when we will all be able to once again gather in this place and worship together. We ask this prayer in the name of Christ, our Redeemer and Sustainer. Amen. Philippines 4-6 is good for us to hear as we are all praying especially hard this week for our congregation and as we come to this time of offering. Do not worry about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be known to God. With thanksgiving we dedicate these offerings to God for the purpose of sharing good news through our witness and wonderful church in the name of the one from whom all blessings flow. The benediction. Gracious God, lead us, we pray, to praiseworthy living that rejoices in the Lord always. Help us not to be anxious about anything, but be focused on you. Guide us and strengthen us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen.